Thank you, Arnak. Thank you, Republic TV, for inviting me. It's, it's a nice feeling to be here. And it's fantastic actually hearing Arnab about his dreams, his aspirations. But not only the dream, but actually seeing a dream getting fulfilled. And I think it, there can't be a better setting than that to actually talk about the theme of the program, which is Vikasit Bharat. But Vikasit Bharat is also a dream. But just as this dream got fulfilled, if we work methodically, systematically, with ambition, drive, and consistency, even that dream can be fulfilled. I think that's important. And I think we need more dreamers in the country, because it is the dreamers who are going to take this country somewhere. It begins with the Prime Minister who dreamt of Vikasit Bharat. He used that word about two and a half years, three years ago. And since then, Vikasit Bharat has actually entered common lingo. But then the question is, why are we talking about Vikasit Bharat? What is Vikasit Bharat? Why are we talking about it now? How is it relevant to us, to our lives, to our nation, and to us as individuals? And we've just come off a fantastic year. I mean, 23, 24, we grew at about 8% plus. India is one of the fastest growing large economies in the world. India contributes almost one-fifth to one-sixth of the incremental GDP in the world. We're the fifth largest economy in the world. We couldn't have dreamt of that long ago. Mark my words, this time, next year, when the next India Economic Summit is held, India will be the fourth largest economy. And three years down the road, by 27, we will be the third largest economy. India's place on the global stage is undeniable. It cannot be pushed off anymore. This century, the coming century, the 21st century, is India's century. We are at an interesting point in India's history. We are at a cusp in the growth trajectory of India. From a long period of very slow growth of a country riddled with poverty, we are now going to take our place in the Committee of Nations as a leading country in the world. Just step back and think. Where were we in 1947? This was a country which was written off People were not sure whether the country would hold as one nation down the road. I mean, we have had a neighbor who has not been able to hold itself with just two provinces. India has held, not only held itself. We were living an existence which was called ship to mouth. You know, we are waiting for PM 480 food grain to land at the ports in Mumbai or wherever to get the next food out of our PDA shops. That was the condition of India. Where are we now? We were the, the entire government structure was designed to handle what? Famines, relief, floods, drought. This was, I mean, the country riddled with poverty and the primary function of government was to somehow manage to keep people alive in the middle of poverty. That was India of 1947. Where are we today? We had some reforms in 91 that unleashed the private sector, but we didn't do the reforms willingly. They were done very unwillingly because we were under serious pressure on our foreign exchange. We were in a trade crisis and we were compelled to do a set of reforms that unleashed a lot of growth potential in the country. But take, a, take, take where we are today. Last 10 years have been phenomenal. What this country has demonstrated in the last 10 years is a couple of things. We can do things with speed, we can do things at scale, and we can do things innovatively. A complete transformation in the capacity of government and society and business to deliver things on a large scale. I mean, Republic TV is an example of that. Something which was floated is now actually got global ambitions to be one of the leaders in you know media world in globally. I think India, as the fifth largest economy, needs to think like that. Do we have the attributes of a fifth largest economy? Not yet. We are fifth in terms of size. Do we have companies which are in the top 20 in the world? Do we have banks which are in the top 10 in the world? We have insurance companies, chartered accountancy firms, law firms, etc. Not yet. I think that's the kind of dream everybody should have. But the good thing is, last 10 years have been phenomenal in the way India has transformed itself. We have actually solved all the problems of the last 700 years. I say that the problems of the last century are over. What were the problems of the last century? Roti, kapda, makan get people food, get them something to do, get them shelter, get them some connectivity. I mean, something that has been achieved phenomenal in the last 10 years is get people basic services at their doorstep. 
We have 100% connectivity by road, we have connectivity by electricity, every house has electric supply. By middle of next year, we should have water supply in every household, everybody has a telephone, there is shelter for everybody, everybody is covered under some food safety net, healthcare is being provided to individuals. These were the things which actually bugged India for the last 75 years. These are no longer problems. We have, to, we have also demonstrated our capability in a large number of things. Look at the capital expenditure that has been there. Look at the transformation of India's infrastructure. The speed with which India is building infrastructure is unprecedented. India is actually looking like a construction site, which it should be. Because a country which is aspirational and is growing fast will look like a construction site. And as we go along, you can see a lot of that transformation actually hitting you. We are also not just doing that. We are also doing things innovatively. Digital public infrastructure is literally an Indian invention. We have taken technology and actually democratized it and put it in public space. I mean, be it Aadhaar, be it UPI. I mean, UPI accounts for 45 to 50 percent of all electronic financial transactions in the world, just UPI alone. I mean, it's sometimes a shocking thing that you go to a street vendor and the street vendor, you know, a vegetable seller actually has a QR code in front of him or her. I mean, I, I actually was ashamed once when I went to a, a, a seaside, you know, Moomphali Wala in Vishakapatnam and 10 rupees was what it was and I pulled out a 100 rupee note and the lady said, Saab UPI nahi hai kya, you know, and then you recoil. There you are. They are actually more advanced. So the country has built a fabulous DPI infrastructure in, in, the, in the, you know, the jam trinity in the fintech space. But it's getting expanded into other areas, into agriculture, into the legal systems, into land records, across the board. And now we have got ONDC. The aim of ONDC is to democratize online e-commerce to enable more and more people to get on board as suppliers, vendors, transporters, payment masters. So India has demonstrated its capability to do things. It's demonstrated its capability to do science and technology innovatively. We have landed on a difficult part of the moon which nobody has landed in. We have the cheapest mission that has gone to Mars. The science and technology in India is not jugad. It's proper science and technology, but done efficiently, low cost, thinking innovatively. The first 3D printed rocket actually took off from IIT Chennai a couple of months ago. I mean, this is something unbelievable. It's the youth of India who are actually driving a lot of the change. They are the ones with dreams and aspirations. Having solved the problems of the last century, where are we today in 2020? We are at a very interesting point. With the fifth largest economy, as I said, we are also a very, very widely spread economy. We are not a one-trick pony. We are not like Bangladesh, which lives on garments. We are not like in a country which lives only on oil. We have an economy which is very diversified and covers the entire span of any what an economy should. Agriculture, industry, services. India is as good as the best that come. Given that, Given that we have an economy which is diverse, given that we have another plus point in our favor, which is demography, India is not only the most populous country in the world, it's among the youngest countries in the world. A median age is 29. The median age of China next door is 39. The median age of the United States is 38. Japan is pushing 50. Italy is pushing 50. By 2047, India's median age will still be less than what China is today. We will stabilize about 160 crores. Democracy is in our favor. We have got a lot of things in our favor. This is a country which is ready to take off. And that's what the Prime Minister has identified. And it, it, it's, a, it's a mark of his ability to look deep into the future, pushing out the mists which normally cloud our vision, and talk about Vikasit Bharat. Why did he talk about it? it he, he talked about it first in 2021 on the Independence Day from Red Fort. Because if you see what all we have around us, the entire systems that are there, having solved the problems of the last century, we are at a takeoff stage. So if you don't start thinking about the next step, we won't take the next step. You know, it's like saying, you know, I, I want to survive, I just want to have two meals a day. You have your two meals. What do you do next? How do I improve my meal? How do I live better? How do I go out and eat more? That is why he has forced people to think about Vikasit Bharat. What does Vikasit Bharat mean? Vikasit Bharat is a very interesting thing. Vikasit Bharat in a Western concept would mean a developed country. The World Bank has a definition for a developed economy. It is about $14,000 per annum per capita income. 
we niti ayog the entire government working with the people of india we have actually had inputs from more than 15 lakh people have prepared a vision for vikasit bharat how will that vikasit bharat look like vikasit bharat will be an economy which will be about 30 trillion dollars that's bigger than the united states today just to you know remind you how big would that be it's very difficult to add these zeros it's bigger than what united states is today i'm not saying united states will be static it will grow but 30 trillion is something is very difficult for most of us to imagine it means that 90% of india with 3 and a half trillion or so now is yet to be built this india is still in the works in the pipeline 30 trillion dollars 18000 dollars how will this country look like it will be very different lifestyles will be different it will be very very urbanized 50 to 60% of population will be urban people will travel differently they will work differently they will commute differently we will have to prepare for that kind of a day which is going to be there in the future how will governance look like i as a civil servant 35 years career behind me was not trained to handle the problems of a middle income india we were trained to handle the problems of a low income india most of us are experts in poverty related issues if that is a thing of the past we need governance also to change and i think that is why the prime minister started hitting at the word vikasit bharat you need to improve the capacities of government you need to have bureaucrats think differently plan differently recast governance if you ask the government what are the biggest departments it's agriculture rural development these are the big departments of government if you look at the amount of money that goes in the departments of the future are going to be quite different is it all also going to be run only by people in the side government wrong i mean there is more talent 90% of talent is outside government how do we bring that talent to actually work in government that is the india of the future that is the vikasit bharat we are actually planning for working for there are a couple of questions why are we talking about it now we understand but are there other things in our favor yes many things that we have solved the problems of the last century is in our favor that we have the fifth largest economy is in our favor that we have demography in our favor is a good point there are other things also geopolitics by good fortune is in our favor there are our neighbors who are not the most popular popular countries around the world the world wants india to succeed china plus 1 is something which is bugging every major multinational people are looking for options for buying stuff getting the supply chains out that is an opportunity which is going to be in india's favor both supply chain realignment as the general drift away from china the drift is not only because of geopolitics it's also because of demographics china's own population is shrinking by 2047 when india will be a 165 crore country the population of china will actually be around 120 or 110 crores end of this century china will be less than 100 crores so it's a country whose size will be shrinking and our we will be growing bit larger and then we'll stabilize about 160 crores so given that for lack of employee employees lack of labor people will move out of china india has a huge opportunity there's another opportunity staring at india which is technological change two major things are happening one is climate change a lot of people talk about climate change as a threat it's also an opportunity because the way you travel will change you know you'll move from ic engine to evs you'll consume less coal based power you'll consume more of you know solar power there'll be a technological change associated with climate change simultaneously another technological change is happening which is artificial intelligence and all the related stuff ai is again seen as a threat ai could be an opportunity given this this entire sector is driven by humans by people it's it's all software i mean that's one of the best strengths we have so both these disruptions climate change and artificial intelligence are going to work in india's favor for a very simple reason they will equalize everybody technological disruptions remove the differences between countries and make them on the same footing because everybody is at the same starting point you know when the ic engine got invented the steam engine becomes less relevant when electricity gets invented whatever was there before becomes irrelevant so when these new disruptions are there we are on the same footing think of a country they take the united states 
It gets a lot of its power from coal plants. More, more, lot of Europe gets a lot of power from gas plants and coal plants. They have to rewire their entire economies for a green economy. We are yet to build our economy. So we can actually build them green from day one. So we actually are at an advantage because we don't actually need to actually recast our existing industries. We will be building new industries. So these technological disruptions are in our favor. So if you count what are the things in our favor, our economy is in our favor, democracy is in our favor, geopolitics is in our favor, our own stature in the world, which the Prime Minister has raised. India is seen as a friend in the world. It's seen as a leader of the global south. Why did nobody think of getting the, uh, Africa into the African Union, into the G20, till India became a president? Everybody saw that it's the largest continent in the world, a growing continent, but it didn't occur to anybody. Why so? It's a very interesting point, a thought process. It shows that the biases we were just hearing from Arnab a little while ago are there subliminally in everybody. Till somebody woke up and said, why can't you actually get them in? Nobody refused after that, because you, it's undeniable. These things are in our favor. Technological change and disruption are in our favor. If we use all these things correctly, if we take advantage of all the things which are in our favor, in 25 years' time, we will actually be Vikasit Bharat. It's not that this is easy. We will have to keep growing at 9% or so for 25 years. Very few countries have done that. Very few countries have grown at 9% for 25 years. The United States to become a developed country took 100 years. We are trying to do it in 25 years. There are about 10 countries which have done it. You know, South Korea has done it. Singapore has done it. There are examples. Chile has done it. But there are not more than 10. The World Bank did a study around 2010 or so. In 1960, the world had 101 middle-income countries. Only 10 of them became a developed country by 2000. It's difficult. But with determination, with a government which is steady, with one eye on the long term, which is reform-oriented, which doesn't take decisions in the short term, but takes decisions in the long term, and which has dreams and aspirations, whoever it is, I think we can achieve this goal. India is destined to become Vikasit Bharat. The, the, the strength of this, we have a Telugu saying, Desha mante matti kaadhoi, Desha mante manushu loi. A country is not mud and dust, it is people. And I think the strength of India is people and a government which captures the spirit of the people and pushes them forward, we can achieve it. I've just laid down a very general thing. Very detailed plans are there. And there's another thing that's happening which will actually help. It's not only the, at the national level that we are thinking of Vikasit Bharat. We are thinking of Vikasit Bharat at state levels also. And, and the, it, Vikasit Bharat comes only from Vikasit Raj. So you need to have Vikasit Raj. So for example, Niti Aayog is working with about 12 states, preparing visions for 12 states. And we've released one for Gujarat, Andhra is about to be released, Chhattisgarh, Orissa, Madhya Pradesh, you name it across the country, Goa, Assam, the entire eastern region, Rajasthan, Punjab, we're working with everybody. Because everybody has to work in harmony, in tandem. Everybody has relative strengths. Everybody's aspirations will be slightly different. And we'll have to work, strategize. But I think those plans are falling in place and I'm sure we'll be able to achieve that. Thank you very much.